Hello, my name is Colour Sergeant Hawkins, and today we'll be looking at recognising the shape of ground on maps. Now, the first thing to understand when recognising the shape of ground on maps is what contour lines are and how to use them. Contour lines show the height of any point above sea level, and they're mostly shown on maps as orangey brown lines, as you can see in the top right picture as an example. They join points of equal height together with one long continuous line to identify the height of a particular place. This is supplemented by numbers every 5, 10 or 50 metres apart to show you the height in metres above sea level, with thicker lines every 50 metres. They are always shown in ascending height, but the rotation of the numbers will depend ver uh, depending on the actual location in question. If they're closer together, the slope is steeper, and if they're further apart, the slope is shallower. As you can see, the pitch in the bottom there shows the map at the bottom with the contour lines ranging from 10 to 40, and then the ground translated in a 3D view. As you can see, the lines closer together form a steeper slope, as you can see on the north facing sides of the hill, whereas in this shallower southern side, the lines are further apart and the rise is shallow. You can also see spot heights on OS maps. These are shown as a dot with a number next to them, such as 173 or 256. These are the exact height of that particular point and are usually found on high points such as peaks or the tops of hills. Right, let's have a bit of practice. Here you can see two pictures. What I want to do is get a pen and a piece of paper and draw what these look like in a 3D view. Pause the video and come back once you've done that. Right, so welcome back and let's have a look at the answers. Starting at the one on the left, you can see it is very steep near the top and shallow near the bottom, with the right side being a lot steeper than the left. Moving on, the second one, you can see it is much shallower and much smaller than the first one. You can see it's a nice steep, uh, shallow slope going on the left side with a slight drop on the right, but shallowing out near the bottom. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how contour lines are used and what they look like in real life. Moving on, we'll now look at concave and convex slopes. A slope will either be concave, convex, a combination of both, or in some rare cases, a 45 degree line. A concave slope with contour lines bunched together at the top and widely spaced at the bottom, whereas a convex will be the opposite, with widely spaced at the top and bunched together at the bottom. We can use this to gauge how hard the hill will be to walk up and what it might look like on the ground. Here we can see some examples of a map and real world examples of what a convex and a concave slope might look like. The top pictures are concave and the bottom pictures are convex. We can tell this because in the top picture, the contour lines are bunched together at the top where the contour line reads 300 and are more widely spread out at the bottom where the contour line reads 100. We can see in the picture to the right what a concave slope might look like in an extreme example. Notice how at the bottom, it's much smoother and much shallower, whereas at the top, it goes to near vertical. This won't happen in all cases, this is just an example. Sometimes it may be very hard to distinguish whether a slope is concave or convex. Moving on to the bottom, we can see that's very clearly convex, since it's more bunched together at the bottom and widely spaced at the top. And you see an example of that, what that might look like in real life. Of course, a hill could be a combination of both, starting out shallower at the bottom, steeper in the middle and shallowing out at the top again. Now we're going to look at some common features that you might see on maps. So to start off with the most basic, we're going to look at hills. Now you can have many different types of hills. You have a knoll, which is a smallish, rounded, natural hill. A mountain, we know a mountain is. It's a very tall, large hill with maybe smaller knolls on it. And a peak, which is generally a mountain with a pointed top and usually has a spot height to indicate that is the uh, peak. However, hills may have different local names, so um, you may have fens and fells in, for instance, northern England, and you may have pikes as well, which is all just basically means the same thing. It's kind of like a hill or a mountain. Generally, local names, you have to look it up what they mean, but if you look at a map, you can generally fi figure out what they're supposed to be. Here we see just a basic hill. Um, this is a very basic kind of rounded hill. Um, probably won't see this as much if you're just going out naturally it might be part of a, a bigger feature like a mountain or something um, 
But as you can see, it's a hill. So moving on, we're now going to look at valleys, ridge and ridge lines. A valley is a depression. The ground is usually V or U shapes. Valleys are usually formed from water, either going down it in a stream or a river or water that was there in a past age that may have dried up or just simply found a better source down the that mountain. The water will rose away the mountain and create a nice little valley. As you can see, as the picture of what the contour lines might look like for a valley. Notice how it looks like a hill, except Pay attention that the fact the, contour, uh, the numbers of the contour lines are going down instead of up. So the first out is 200, whereas the furthest in is 100. This indicates that the ground is sloping down into a valley. If there was going to be a stream or river, it would likely be right in the lowest part of the valley heading into the lowlands. A ridge is a line of high ground or hills. It can be uh, made up of a number of features we're going to look at in a minute and generally occupies a space in between two hills. A ridge line is a series of ridges with varying elevation. So you may have a lower ridge and then it goes up to a ridge line which is several hundred feet higher. And you can see what that might look like on the ground. Notice how it's a very thin line of hills with it sloping down on either side and it rises up in a ridge line there at the far left. Next we're going to look at spurs and re-entrance. A spur is a short line of high ground usually jutting out of a hill or ridge, whereas re-entrance is like a spur, only going inwards instead of outwards. These are usually found next to each other, forming a series of valleys and ridges, maybe accompanied by a hill or a ridge line. Here you can see an example of a spurs and re-entrance. With the things jutting out there are spurs, whereas the things going in are re-entrance. Re-entrance can be also uh, seen as valleys and usually hold either streams or small rivers going down them, which forms as it carves away the rock. Next, we have saddles and cliffs. A saddle is two high points with low ground between them, usually along a ridge. This could be two hills with a bit of low ground in between, or it could be part of a mountain range or ridge line with just two high points and a slight dip in between. A cliff, well, it's a cliff, it's a near vertical drop. And due to this, the contour line is very close, usually with some sort of um, map symbol identifying that it's rocky or that it is in fact a cliff. Here we can see what contour lines might look like making up a saddle. Notice you've got two high points, um, two hills there and a stretch of lowland in the middle. Whereas here we can see a cliff. Notice that the contour lines along the cliff, which is in the left hand side of the picture, are very close together, going from 200 right the way down to 100 in probably about only a 10 metre distance. You can also see they've got like a little jagged line at the top there, which should indicate that it's either um, not a slope or that's just a sheer drop. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. For a bit of testing, go out or find yourself a map at home if you can't go out um, and try and identify uh, different features on the map. If you can, or you're lucky enough to live nearby somewhere where there's actual um, hills and stuff, go out, look at them and try and identify what they are and compare them to a map, either of the local area or just Google Maps. So in this lesson, we have learned what contour lines are and how to spot and what spot heights are and how to use them, common features to the ground and how to identify them. Okay, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the other videos on this channel. Goodbye.